With sales of electric cars finally on the rise, none have been more popular or more pioneering than the Nissan Leaf. The latest update saw it get a dynamic new look and an increase in range which will now allow it to travel up to 270 kilometers on a single charge. That might be more than enough for the typical driver's daily or even weekly commute, but what happens when you need to take a trip that's longer than that? We decided to find out. Hi, I am Sinead from carsireland.ie and I test cars and present video reviews for our YouTube channel. This is Denise. Who are you, Denise? Hi, I'm Denise Smith. Uh, I'm a journalist with The Sunday World and this weekend we're testing out an electric car and we're going to drive from Dublin to Dingle, hopefully, in one piece. So I've had a few electric cars before. I've never taken one on a long distance road trip and it is one of the reasons that people most often say, oh, that's, I wouldn't get an electric car because sure, you, can't, you can't go on a spontaneous last minute trip in one. But look at us here, yeah. going on a spontaneous <laughs> last minute trip to Dingle. And why Dingle? Because mainly dolphins and gin, a bit of gin. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And um, so we haven't made it that easy for ourselves by picking Dingle as a destination. So the first thing I did um, was check to see if there is a public charging point in Dingle and there is but unfortunately it's out of operation at the moment so we could have took the easy way out yeah, and ch yeah. <laughs> we could have took the easy way out and um, you know changed to there's loads in Killarney or Tralee but that would kind of defeat the purpose because we want to prove that owning an electric car isn't restrictive or proof or disproof yeah, so exactly, yeah. So the plan is to try and get as far as Newcastle West where there's a fast charger. Stop there for an hour, get a bite to eat and then go on as far as Dingle where we'll, where we'll, we'll see what we'll do from there. <laughs> <laughs> so the Leaf is fully charged. I've literally just stopped charging it there to 100% a few seconds ago and we're on 262 kilometres. Now this charge point that we're aiming for is 232 kilometres away. We've just put it into the sat nav there and it's given us a little warning to say that we might not have enough range to get there. But have to try out some of my shoes. Oh, right. <laughs> Denise is really <laughs> testing that battery pack with the 14 pairs of shoes in the back. So yeah, we're going to give it a go and um, yeah, we'll update you on the way, hopefully at Newcastle West. We've got 239 kilometers left and we've 205 kilometers to our destination which is a fast charger and um, so we've decided not to take any risks um, with the aircon and we've got the windows down instead. <laughs> Starting to think that uh, Newcastle West might have been a little bit ambitious. We've only got 75 kilometres left in the tank. We're just past Nina, I think. Um, and it's 67 kilometres to our um, to the fast charger, which is to do some quick maths there. What is that? Three, what, eight kilometres. We've only got eight kilometres to spare. <laughs> um, I've, I've already pressed the eco button, the aircon's not on, the windows are up even though it's very warm and starting to rain a little bit. <laughs> so we're going to see how it goes. We have been on the motorway for a long time so there's been no chance to do any regenerative braking. So I'm hoping that when we do get off the M7, maybe I can claw a few kilometres back that way and we might still make it. Keep the faith. <laughs> It's now started raining really heavily, so we're going to have to put the wipers on, on top of everything. So, yeah, fingers crossed. By the way, we didn't have to do this piece in here. We could have stopped off beforehand. We're being optimistic. We're being optimistic. Yeah. We believe the power of, yeah, we believe. of the electric power. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully we'll have an update for you in, in Newcastle. Also, the Leaf has been giving us some very, very severe warnings that we should have charged before now to the point where it's actually flashing. It's very angry with us. Oh, we're going 50 metres, 50 metres away from safety, we hope. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I look like I've aged 10 years since the last. We found the fast charger, um, Garvey's, Garvey's Centre in Newcastle West. And then there was a slight issue with the charge point. The card reader wasn't working right, so we had to ring the ESB and they sent a charge to the car directly. So we went and we got a bit of grub, came back to like 100% charge. 
um, which was great. So we've now got 256 kilometers in the bank and our accommodation in Dingle is only 109 kilometers away. So it should be a much more relaxed, uh, yeah. <laughs> a much more relaxed journey now from here to Dingle. And um, the only thing is it's still raining, so hopefully we won't have to have, it's, it's, it's easing off a little bit now. Oh, and we also just got great news from the ESB that the charge point in Dingle is back up and running. Instead of kind of messing around with three pin plugs yeah, in the hotel, exactly, yeah. we can plug it in there. So, um, yeah, good evening now. it's good. That Dingle gin is, is feeling closer yes, than ever. Yes, we're ready. down and back and it was a really fun weekend as for long distance travel in an electric car what's your verdict um yeah if you're going to do it you have to be prepared um and you have to kind of block off the whole day i think to travel down yeah definitely leave time. yourself enough time so i think we've established that it is doable i think yeah. the journey down was definitely a learning experience the journey back today was much really more straightforward down. yeah so basically we, um, we went as far as the, char the fast charger in Newcastle West again, charged there for an hour, had something to eat and then I suppose took it a little bit handier than I usually would on the motorway on the way home just to preserve a few kilometres. But all in all, I wouldn't say it took us any longer than half an hour longer than it would have taken in a petrol or a diesel car. So yeah. today, yeah, today, today was much smoother. So I suppose the longer you have a car, the more you get to know it as well. Um, but yeah, I think the top tips we'd have would be one was plan, yeah. pick your chargers, know where you're going to go. Have a contingency plan as yeah. well, like be prepared for, you know, that the fast charge point is occupied and you might need to hang around another hour while someone else charges. Um, what else, what other advice would we give? Yeah, leave plenty of time. <laughs> yes. Yeah, also be prepared for things like weather to throw a spanner in the works. So yeah. I would say leave yourself a bit of breathing space in between your charge points because things like diversions can really throw a spanner in the works if suddenly you have to do an extra 10k yeah. that you weren't banking on. So yeah, definitely leave it yourself a bit of breathing space. Rain as well can be another nightmare because you'll just see your range deplete that little bit quicker. Mm. Um, Actually, one invaluable tip that we picked up was we accidentally mislaid the ESB charge card, which could have been a complete disaster. But if you are in a pinch, a contactless credit card will also yeah, work and job, let you activate yeah. the charge point. So that was that was a bit of a lifesaver, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, the last tip I would have is because it can sometimes take that bit longer to make sure to have good company. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> Till the next time. <laughs>